A match is struck, and a tulip appears. Welcome to the imaginative use of filters, another adventure in Kodak's series on exploring photography. Turning the flame of a match into a brilliantly colored tulip is just one of the many fun and interesting effects you can achieve when you use photographic filters and your imagination. Let's have a look. In your imagination, you may want to portray something with absolute clarity and reality. Or you may choose to add a little extra sparkle to a subject, or a dramatic optical distortion to get your point across. In either case, you can use various filters and lens attachments as photographic tools to create effects and emphasize moods. You can suggest a double image, a reflection, or a mirage. Or you may want to utilize color, any color, to establish a particular time of day. Now, we've all become accustomed to the association of the color blue with nighttime or moonlight. And, of course, you go to the other end of the spectrum to suggest the warmth of late afternoon sun. Now, there are many different kinds of filters. And at first, the variety can be confusing. So I'd suggest watching this program through in its entirety, then concentrating on specific sections. Once you're familiar with those, move on. You can use the tape over and over again, working on one section at a time. The important thing is to go out and take lots of pictures, exploring different filter effects, then come back, compare your results with some of the examples that are on the tape. You'll be able to absorb the information much more easily this way, and you'll soon find that you're consistently taking better and more interesting pictures. Now, filters are a bit like a good spice. A little goes a long way. And after you've learned to use filters effectively, learn also to use them sparingly. And by all means, have fun. The joy of this program and all the programs in the Exploring Photography series is the way in which you'll discover new opportunities for better pictures and new challenges for your imagination. And with that in mind, welcome to this adventure in photography. In this program, we'll show you how to use a variety of filters to make both subtle and dramatic changes in the pictures you take. Filters can change the color, effect, and amount of light entering your camera. They can be round or square, and can be made of plastic, glass, or gelatin. Some filters have built-in threads to match the threads on your lens. These are popular because you can attach, remove, and store them very easily. A lot of photographers like to keep a filter over their lens all the time for protection. Well, let's face it, sooner or later, your camera may bump into something. And a clear skylight filter will protect not only the lens, but also these threads from being damaged. Now, here's a hint that I learned the expensive way. Buy a filter that will fit the largest diameter lens you'd ever expect to own. Then. You can use these adapter rings to fit this filter to your smaller lenses. I'm sure you can see the economics of using just one filter for all your lenses. In fact, here's a square plastic filter system that utilizes the same principle. This is called the Koken square filter system, and you can attach these filters to your camera lens with a specific adapter or mat box to accommodate the filters you've chosen. You can also move the filters to any off-center position over your lens. This is especially effective when you're using a graded filter like this one. So the square filter system is economical and it's also versatile, but it's also somewhat bulkier compared to the screw-in type filters. Now we'll talk more about the special effect capabilities of the matte box later on. Let's begin our look at the effects of filters by seeing how they can control the separation of tones in black and white photographs. In color, 
The red geraniums stand out nicely against a background of green, but when the geraniums are photographed on black and white film without a filter, the red and the green are recorded as nearly the same tone of gray. Now let's say you'd like to separate these black and white tones, so the flowers will stand out against the background. In black and white prints, filters lighten their own color and darken their complement. So when we use number 25 red filter on the left, the red geraniums appear light against the green grass. We reverse this effect by using a number 58 green filter on the picture on the right. Now the green grass is light and the red flowers are dark. Remember, in black and white, filters lighten their own color. This is certainly an attractive scene in black and white, but we can make it even more dramatic by using two lens attachments to darken the sky and make the clouds more prominent. Now, as we're going to see later, a polarizing screen will darken a blue sky. And when that effect is coupled with a red filter, the sky becomes really dramatic. Of course, you'll need to add exposure to compensate for the amount of light absorbed by most filters. And the filters with deeper colors require more exposure compensation than filters with more subtle hues. In general, a single lens reflex camera with a through the lens metering system will tell you the correct exposure when you take a reading with the filters on the lens. If you don't have through the lens metering, read your camera and filter instructions before setting your exposures. We mentioned earlier how the polarizing screen was used to help darken the blue sky in a black and white photograph. The polarizing screen can also darken the sky in color photographs, such as the one on the right. This sky darkening effect is greatest when you're taking pictures at right angles to the sun. Both of these pictures were made through a polarizing screen. The one on the left was made with the sun at the photographer's back. On the right, the photographer is shooting at a right angle to the sun to slightly darken the blue sky. You'll also get different degrees of polarization depending on how you position this screen in front of your lens. With through the lens camera viewing, just turn the screen until you see the effect you like. A polarizing screen will require about one and a half stops additional exposure, which can be easily read with through the lens camera meters. The polarizing screen is perhaps the most versatile lens attachment you can use. It not only darkens skies, but it also reduces the distant blue haze, as you can see on the right. The Grand Canyon view on the left was taken without a screen. Here again, the effect will be most noticeable with right angle lighting and with the screen rotated to its maximum position. The polarizing screen is also useful in any type of copy photography. Now we've used the screen on the right to reduce most of the reflections from the textured surface of the photographic print. The screen also reduces reflections from many surfaces, including glass, as we've shown on the right. It will also reduce reflections on water, but will have no effect on reflections from bare metal surfaces. When the polarizing screen removes reflections from many surfaces, it tends to allow more saturated colors to reach the film. You can see the more brilliant colors in the polarized picture on the right because the reflections from the foliage have been greatly reduced. Color conversion filters allow you to use color slide film balanced from one type of lighting and several different types of light. For example, Kodak Ektachrome 160 film is intended for use in tungsten light the kind given off by ordinary light bulbs without any filter. If you want to use tungsten slide film outdoors, you'll need to use an 85B conversion filter. You can also convert the popular daylight balanced color slide film for use in tungsten lighting by using the 80A filter. Of course, you don't need any filter at all when you use daylight film outdoors. Both of these pictures were taken in normal household lighting. We used an 80A filter on the right to correct the color rendition. However, many photographers don't seem to mind the warm image they get when they use daylight type color slide film with tungsten light. If you take photographs on color slide film by fluorescent light, you may get an off-color cast similar to the picture on the left. 
the color of fluorescent light varies dramatically depending on the type of lamp. So you may need several compensating filters to get colors similar to what you see on the right. You may find it easier to use film for color prints. When the processing lab makes the prints, they can often correct the color. One of the most exciting uses I find for filters is the way they can be used to create moods and atmospheres. There's a lot of psychology surrounding the effects colors have on us. The expression, looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, suggests that many people feel brighter or happier in response to warmer colors. When they aren't so happy, we say they're feeling blue. Think for a moment of how many different colored lenses you've seen on sunglasses. Well, there's an even greater selection of colored filters to suit any mood or effect you might dream up. There are times when you can use exaggerated colors to achieve the effect or feeling you're looking for. For example, we use the 80A conversion filter we mentioned earlier to create the feeling of cold. You may not feel that we've added that much blue to the picture. So, let's look at a comparison of pictures with and without the 80A filter. The blue picture on the right is a dramatic change from the realistic scene, but it's generally acceptable because the blue enhances the picture's distinctly cold subject matter. We use the same blue filter to create a completely different effect, moonlight. Many of us tend to associate blue with moonlight, so one way of simulating moonlight is to slightly underexpose a daylight scene and use an 80A filter. Many of us will relate light brown or amber colors with warmth and age. As a matter of fact, movie directors may use amber filters to create scenes that look as though they were taken several generations ago. We used a deep orange filter to make this ordinary windmill appear as though it's facing a very warm afternoon sun. Combine an orange filter with a subject that's really associated with heat, and you've effectively used a strong color to visually communicate a temperature. Some of the best opportunities to use strong filters will appear on days when the sky and lighting are not the best for traditional photographs. Here are two interpretations of the same subject taken against an overcast sky. Now we've used the number 25 red filter to suggest a strong emotion. Silhouette subjects generally work the best whenever you're using filters that are highly saturated. It seems amazing, doesn't it, that one filter can change color right before our very eyes, like a chameleon? This one filter can do the work of several. That's a strong practical advantage if you don't like taking a lot of equipment with you when you go out picture taking. A variable color filter is a single filter which produces either of two colors or various shades in between. The filter used here offers blue and red, as we see in the center and on the right. It could also offer various shades of magenta in between the blue and red extremes. The picture on the left was taken without any filtration at all. Which of these pictures do you prefer? Variable color filters, by the way, use a polarizing screen to help achieve the color change. You can get them in any number of color combinations. Another nice advantage of the variable color filter is that you can actually see the colors change as you rotate the lens. Remember that when you use a filter, you'll almost always have to increase your exposure. If you're using richly colored filters and want to handhold your camera, you may want to select films with fast speed ratings such as 400 or 1000. But if you prefer slower films, you may have to use slower shutter speeds and a camera support like a tripod. But if you like to use filters to make more subtle color changes, you should select color slide film rather than film for color prints. Let's say, for example, that you'd like your pictures to have a slightly warm feeling to them. You might select the number 81A filter we used on the right to achieve that subtle effect. Color slide film allows you to fine-tune the overall color of your pictures in this way. When you're using film for color prints, remember the final overall color is adjusted in the lab that does your printing, so it's a good idea to let them know what filter you've used. 
They may be able to print the effects of a strong filter such as this rose-colored filter, but they probably won't be able to recognize and print the effects of a subtle filter such as this 81A we've just mentioned. Now, if you do your own darkroom printing or use custom labs, you can have pictures made in just about any color you choose. These two entirely different prints were made from the same color negative. So remember, use slide films if you want to control colors using filters over the camera lens, or use color print film if you prefer to control colors later, when you and your photo finisher are making your color prints. Some filters can be used effectively with any type of film. The picture on the right was taken with a fog or mist filter. It's an excellent filter for softening details in close-up people pictures. You can select fog or mist filters in different degrees. The higher the number, the greater the effect. Here's a comparison. Number one is on the left. Number three is in the middle. And on the right is number five. The number one is good for close-up portraits, and at the other extreme, the number five works for special mood effects or for simulating dense fog. The number three fog filter was used on the right, and no filter on the left. Notice how these fog filters tend to lower the contrast by lightening the shadows in photographs. We also used a number three fog filter to take this butterfly picture. This filter creates the softness that we've mentioned, and it also creates a halo effect that makes subjects appear more delicate or mysterious. Don't forget that you can combine the effects of several filters simply by attaching them to the front of your lens. This picture was taken with a fog plus an 80A blue filter. If you'd like to soften only the edges of your picture, there's a filter that will do that as well. The picture on the right emphasizes the facial features by using a filter that is clear in the middle and has the fog effect only around the edges. There are other ways you can get a diffusion effect in your photographs as well. For instance, take a clear glass filter and apply a thin layer of Vaseline or petroleum jelly around the outside edge. You'll be amazed at the variety of effects you get when you use this filter with different focal length lenses and at different lens openings. Have you ever wondered how photographers control the blur effect in their pictures? Hmm. It's easy if you use a motion effect filter. For example, this horse race picture was taken with a one-half blur or motion effect filter, which recorded the lead horses quite sharply and the rest of the pack with increasing blur. You'll probably want to experiment with this motion filter before you actually start taking pictures. Try it with different focal length lenses at different lens opening F numbers. You can actually see this comet tail blur effect by looking through the camera lens and pressing the depth of field preview button. You'll also want to slide this motion filter around in front of the lens to position the blur in just the right part of the photograph. Star filters are among the most popular filters in photography, and when tastefully used, they can add just the right finishing touch to a photograph. On the right, we used a star filter to create a star effect from the sun at the edge of the tree. The star filter has the ability to brighten a subject by adding a twinkle, a specular or reflective highlight in the picture area. You can get a dramatic star effect and avoid the overpowering rays of direct sunlight by looking for ways to partially block the sun. In this case, the photographer moved up and down the ski slope until the sun was almost hidden by the crest of the hill. Remember that you can often combine filters for a variety of effects. The star effect can complement any of the deep colored filters you may choose. Again, notice how we use the partially blocked sun to avoid excessive flare. There is a variety of diffraction type filters that also respond to specular highlights in the picture area. These filters send out rays of rainbow colored light that emanate from the light source in the scene. In this case, the light source is the sun modified by the tree. The diffraction filter was simply rotated on the lens to place the colorful ray of light at a diagonal position in the picture. Different diffraction filters create different ray patterns. The welder's arc 
provides the bright light needed for the diffraction filter to send out distinct colored rays. This ship, the Star Queen, doesn't normally float around with multicolored rays emanating from its cabin. In this case, a circular diffraction filter sent out a group of rays from the cabin's lights. You can get several identical images of a single subject by choosing a multi-image lens attachment. Depending on which multiple image lens you choose, you have the capability of recording these images in linear, concentric, or radial patterns. And if you'd like to add a variety of colors to these images, just cut up some gelatin filters and tape them over the multi-image lens of your choice to add color where you'd like it. As in this multi-image picture of a daisy. We've shown you a lot of different filters and effects so far, and it brings me to a point that I mentioned at the beginning, and I want to re-emphasize before we go any further. In the world of special effects, a little goes a long way. My point is, be judicious in your use of filters and special effects. I always try to take my pictures both ways, with and without filters. That way, I have a choice later on. Editing and comparing after you've approached a subject in several different ways is often just as much fun as taking the picture. Which of these two pictures do you prefer? The straightforward rendition of a dramatic subject, such as we see on the left, or the more poetic interpretation on the right? Well, the choice is yours. I'd like to wind up our program by showing you some special effects techniques that will really challenge your imagination and add a whole new dimension to your picture-taking capabilities. I'm sure you've seen movies or television commercials where one person is presented as twins and the same person is actually talking to himself or herself. In still photography, one of the ways you can get this same effect is by using a device called a matte box and the time-honored technique of multiple exposures. We placed this mat, which is one half opaque, in the matte box or holder in front of the camera lens and positioned Peggy for the first exposure. Then we had her move over and we flipped the mat so that it covered the other half of the lens and made the second exposure on the same piece of film. The matte box combinations are truly limitless. These two mats, for instance, were used to make this double exposure of a wedding. To make multiple exposures, you'll need a through-the-lens viewing camera, such as a single-lens reflex. Then position the subjects carefully in each portion of the frame you'll be using and make each exposure at the same lens opening F number. Now, if necessary, adjust the shutter speed to control exposure. If you change the lens opening F number between exposures, you may get a noticeable mismatch in the blending of images. Read your camera instructions carefully to determine the best way to make multiple exposures. On many cameras, you'll have to depress the rewind button while you advance the film. To prevent the film from moving between exposures, turn the rewind knob until you've taken up the slack in the film. Then tape the knob to your camera body to maintain the tension while you make your multiple exposures. Since we've mentioned both filters and multiple exposures, let's use both of them to make striking photographs that add a dash or splash of color to anything that moves in front of your camera. Here's how it works. Put your camera on a tripod and make three separate exposures of a subject, each with a different filter. One with a number 25 red, another with a number 61 green, and a third with a number 38A blue filter. Everything in the scene that remains motionless, like the big rock, will appear normal. However, anything that moves will be recorded with rainbow-like colors. Then the film registers all three exposures into one picture and adds color to anything that moved during the exposure. After the exposure, close the camera shutter, advance the film to the next frame, and you're ready to try another moving subject in a rainbow of colors. If it seems like we've covered a lot of ground, well, we have. And believe it or not, we've only scratched the surface of what's available and what you can do with filters and special lens attachments. And don't overlook, by the way, what you can do with found filters. 
simple everyday objects or techniques that can create special photographic effects. For instance, you might take a picture through the raindrops on a windshield. Or try a fog effect simply by breathing on the camera lens. Or you might even create your own star filter by using a patch of window screening in front of your lens. But whether you create stars or fog or colors or multiple images, remember that photographic filters are intended to serve your imagination, not to control it. Now that you've seen the program once, I'd suggest taking a few days to think about the kind of photography you do and consider what filters might help. Are you interested primarily in sports photography? Well, blur filters and multiple image filters can add excitement to your pictures. Are people your favorite subject? Fog filters can enhance the quality of many close-up portraits. Once you've decided what kinds of filters might suit you best, take a look at the tape again and concentrate on the portions where those filters are discussed. Before long, you'll find that filters are allowing your imagination to create new photographic images that'll add sparkle and a little variety to your picture collection. Thank you for watching. And remember, this tape is a photographic tool the more you use it, the more adept you'll become at applying the knowledge it contains. Good luck. Oh, and happy picture taking.